Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. A new study from the Mayo Clinic found that patients with polycystic kidney disease can have dual surgery safely. That means that they can have their diseased polycystic kidneys removed at the time of their transplant surgery, instead of having two separate procedures as has been done traditionally. With us today to discuss this is the lead author of the study, Dr. Mikel Prieto. He is a transplant surgeon here at Mayo Clinic. Thanks so much for being with us today. For our lay audience, you could explain what polycystic kidney disease is. I, I am a transplant surgeon, as you said, and I do a lot of kidney transplants. Now, when we do a kidney transplant, it's because somebody's kidneys have failed. The reason for failing kidneys can be very many different diseases can cause this problem. Diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, uh, congenital diseases, uh, and other things. Uh, one of them uh, is one of the main ones is called polycystic kidney disease, which is a genetic disease. You're born with it. And what happens is uh, that uh, your, your kidneys with time, not as a child, they st start to develop cysts. Actually, it's not just the kidneys. Sometimes you have cysts also in the liver and the pancreas and other places. And, and they start growing the cysts and those kidneys start getting bigger. And typically around your age 40 or 50, the kidneys stop um, working and at that point or when you're getting close to the kidneys uh, stopping working is when the when we advise you to either to get a kidney transplant or otherwise you will have to start dialysis the interesting thing about this disease and what is what this study uh, does is that some of these patients not all of them in fact the majority don't have this problem the kidneys are so big that they cause a lot of quality of life problems like pain and other things so they not only need a new kidney but they also need to have their kidneys out why has it been necessary in the past to, to do the transplant in one surgery and the removal of the diseased kidneys in another first of all there are three big surgeries and you know when you combine surgeries people people worry Obviously, most of these transplants, at least at Mayo, are uh, transplants from a leading donor. Now, that's a precious gift that you cannot get more than once from the same donor, of course. And you don't want to jeopardize the chances of that kidney working well by doing two additional operations at the same time that can cause complications like bleeding or infection. And at the end, you may put at risk the transplant. And this is one of the reasons why surgeons for a long time have been reluctant to do everything at the same time, even though, though clearly some patients, they need all three operations. How did you then decide to begin to offer the surgery laparoscopically and to do it kind of as an all-in-one surgery? I, I came to Mayo in 1999, and then we were starting to do laparoscopic nephrectomies for kidney donors. At that time, we were doing a lot of leading donor transplants, and we were doing the, the, the donor surgery the old-fashioned way, where you make a big cut in the side, uh, cut a rib out, and get the kidney out with traditional open surgery. In 1999, when I came here, we started doing the laparoscopic nephrectomy for normal size, normal donor kidneys. And shortly after that, I thought, once, once we felt comfortable with this type of procedure, after that, having done a few dozen of this procedure, I, I had patients that needed also to have their large polycystic kidneys taken out. And, uh, you know, at that time we were doing it, everybody was doing it with the, also the open technique, which meant a very large incision from the cyphoid to all the way to the pubis, the whole belly was open. And then we took this, the large kidneys, sometimes they are like watermelons out. Now I thought, well, if we can do the, the normal kidney laparoscopically, why don't we try to do the, this large kidneys laparoscopically, everybody thought it was impossible, first of all, because you have to get them out through a small incision. And these kidneys, as I said, they are huge. But, you know, they are, the, the, the kidneys are large because they are full of cysts, full of water. So if you start emptying those cysts, you can shrink the kidneys down to a size where you can bring them out through a small hole, a relatively small hole, typically about three and a half inch hole. Uh, and that, that way we get them out. So I started doing the operation but at the time, we didn't feel confident that we could do this and also do the transplant at the same time. So in 2000, 2001, 2002, and until 2014, we always scheduled this surgery separately. And the rest of the world still does it usually that way. 
um, and, and because they are essentially three big surgeries, taking the left kidney out, this large kidney is big, one big surgery, taking the right kidney out is another big surgery, and doing the transplants, third big surgery. So we felt, you know, uh, for many years, we did not dare to do this at the same time. Typically here, although some other centers do it the other way around, we did the transplant first, we let the patient recover from the transplant, and then, we took the kidneys out typically six months, eight months later. Now, after years of doing this operation and feeling myself, feeling fairly confident that we could do this safely with very, very low complication rates, patients started asking me, why can't we do this at the same time? Because especially some patients with very large polycystic kidneys, uh, they're miserable. And until you take their kidneys out, they are not gonna be happy, even though they have a new kidney that is working great. So. As I became more confident about the possibility of doing this is when I started to say, okay, I think the risk is small enough that we can offer to do the transplant, take the kidneys out first and do the transplant right away in the same surgery. And that's when we started in 2014. The first case went very well. So we offered it to the second patient that came with a similar condition. And since then, essentially, we haven't done, every time a patient comes in that has large polycystic kidney that are painful or have issues, and also need a transplant, we just do it all at the same time. Do you put the new kidney in the spot where the old kidneys were? No, not at all, actually. The, the kidney goes uh, in, a, in a similar way as we do all the regular kidney transplants. And one of the beauties of this operation is by the time we are done, essentially the patient has a, a transplant incision, which is not that different than a normal transplant incision, which is an incision down here in the right lower quadrant side in the pelvis, and that's the incision where we do a traditional transplant after having been able to take both large kidneys out through a smaller incision. Now, we do this operation with a hand-assisted technique, which means that you make an incision that is about, about three and a half inches, usually I say about the length of my index finger, uh, at the bottom of the abdomen, you know, uh, almost would be like a small C-section incision. And through that incision, we can cut the kidneys inside the belly out. And then these kidneys, as I said, they are full of uh, cysts. And so it's a little bit like, like punching holes on a, on a big bubble wrap. So those cysts, as you, as you with your fingers, you break the cyst and, the, and water falls out of the cyst. You suction that water out. Sometimes we have several liters of water. So the kidneys, they shrink down the same way a, a big ball of bubble wrap would shrink down if you pop a lot of the cyst, and then you can pull that out through, through a relatively small hole. That's the trick. So a lot of patients come from all over the country and from all over the world to be treated here. So we have a much larger number of patients that have this problem than most other transplant centers and hospitals. And of course, as, as the word has spread out that we are doing this procedure, which really is not being offered almost anywhere else, there's more and more patients learning about it and coming over here. And that's why now we have, in four years, we have managed to do 52 cases, which is a very large number compared to the volumes that usually are reported by other centers. What have you seen in terms of outcomes between patients who have the dual surgery or patients who um, just undergo the transplant initially? First of all, the outcomes uh, for kidney transplantation these days, and most people that are not involved in this field are not aware of this are fantastic. You know, the success rate at Mayo uh, in Rochester for, for a kidney transplant is above 99%. So there's very, very few kidney, kidneys that we put in at the, for one reason or, or another and that don't work. In part, on this series of these 52 patients, the success rate was 100%. Every, every, kidney, every patient that got a kidney transplant and their kidneys out at the same time had, has had a working kidney for a long time. So, so really, the, the success has been excellent. Now, the question is, what is the difference between, and this is what this study was looking at, the difference between the patients that have all this five-hour operation versus the one that just had a kidney transplant. And we compare those two groups, the ones that had relatively smaller kidneys, they had no symptoms, they, have all, they had also polycystic kidney disease, uh, and we, took their, we did a transplant where they didn't need to have their kidneys out, Essentially, the outcomes are the same. They both patients groups do very well. Uh, the hospital stay is, on average, one day longer for the patients that undergo the big surgery. So, so if our average hospital stay for a regular kidney transplant without an nephrectomy is three days, 
for these patients is four days, so one extra day, which is very reasonable. There's a slightly higher hospitalized, hospitalization rate, but in terms of long-term, the difference really are, are no difference in terms of complications and other things. So traditionally, when um, patients would have two surgeries, how far would they be distanced apart? They wouldn't be done during the same hospitalization, is that correct? No, no, here and different hospitals and different transplant programs do it differently. We didn't like the idea of taking the kidneys out before the transplant for multiple reasons, but one of them is because obviously if you take the kidneys out and leave the patient on dialysis, uh, and leave the patient with no urine output, you have to put them on dialysis. Sometimes if you lose blood and you need to give them blood transfusion, that, that could sensitize them. And then it's much harder to find a kidney that works for them because they have developed a lot of antibodies due to the blood transfusions. So we didn't like uh, doing the, the bilateral nephrectomy before we do the transplant. So we always, almost always, we did it afterwards. So we did first the transplant and typically we, we told them at least six months waiting time to recover from the transplant and make sure things are good and stable. Six months later, sometimes it was longer than that, we can, we can take the kidneys out. Some of the benefits of this are clearly obvious. <laughs> having a working kidney and not having to come back for a second surgery, which I imagine uh, no one looks forward to. Are there other um, advantages to the patients? Well, I, I've known from the day I started doing this, um, that this the, the, this was a huge advantage for the patients that are there underwent this, but it, this was anecdotal. I just was seeing these patients recover. They are, to be honest, my most grateful patients because they are patients that not they are scared because they need a big operation, a kidney transplant, but also they are miserable. Many of them have enormous kidneys. I mean, some people look like they are pregnant with twins, and they are just these huge things that they are in their abdomen that take all the space in the abdomen. So getting rid of that is such a liberation for many of these patients that is just the, the feeling of satisfaction that having a new kidney that works plus having a normal abdomen and they lose sometimes 20, 30 pounds just by taking the kidneys out. And so, so they are the most satisfied patients, but we had just until this paper that just came out we had basically anecdotal experience that this worked. We knew it was working, but finally, uh, after doing this for a few years and having enough numbers to have a meaningful look at our outcomes and data, that, that this is where this paper comes in, where we publish looking at, at all the results of the last four, five years and comparing that with, with the patients that just underwent a regular transplant. And we confirm what we already knew, which is that these patients really do well and benefit from this combined procedure. And how wonderful that so much of this is done laparoscopically with such small incisions to heal rather than larger incisions uh, that have been used traditionally. Yeah, I hope that uh, as this paper becomes uh, well known, uh, that other centers will start to offer this option. Right now, there's a few centers that offer uh, to do the operation at the same time, but in general, most of them uh, all they offer is with a big open cut incision to take the kidneys out through a middle line incision from sipoid to pubis and then doing the transplant at the same time. But that's a much bigger operation. So this, this way is a better way to do it. Our thanks to Dr. Mikel Prieto, a transplant surgeon here at Mayo Clinic who's been sharing with us today about the management of polycystic kidney disease and transplant. I hope that you learned something. I know that I did and we wish you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org, then click on podcasts. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.